Dad and Kids Play One. From midget sized robots who constantly save the world from Dr. Wily. To hawk sized supervillains who use symbiotes as weapons. I'm Dad Mishima, and these are the six unique things about Marvel vs. Capcom. Number one, it's the fifth versus game in the series. Marvel vs. Capcom is the fifth entry in the fighting series, but if you're only counting versus titles, then technically this would be the third on the list. So yeah, this is the third installment to include a tag mechanic, and Capcom will go on and include a variable assist function, but with major changes. The game capitalized off of what Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter has done, and Capcom continued to find success with each new installment. Marvel vs. Capcom was released back in 1998 for the arcades, then ported over to the Dreamcast and PlayStation in 1999. Number 2. It was the only game to use the random assist and variable cross feature. The random assist function works just like the variable assist from the previous installment. The main difference here is that you can only use the assist with a non-playable character. Also, you can only have a set amount of times that you can summon the assist before you run out. I call this type of assist random since the game will automatically select an assist from a list of non-playable characters after you select your partner. Also, I would like to mention another function called Variable Cross, which allows a player to attack with both of their characters together but only for a limited amount of time. Sadly, this game is the only game in the series that used the Variable Cross and will go on to be replaced in the next installment. Number 3. It's the third game to include both Marvel and Capcom characters in this roster. Marvel vs. Capcom has an amazing roster and just as the name implies, the game took a broader approach on both Marvel and Capcom characters. So that means we don't just get Street Fighter characters here. This time around, we gain access to a wide range of Capcom characters such as Mega Man and Strider Hero. Other new characters include Captain Commando and Jen from Cyberbots as well as Morgan from Darkstalkers. On the Marvel side, we got two new characters added. Venom and War Machine had made it into the game, with War Machine being like a slower Iron Man, but with more firepower. Marvel vs. Capcom base roster has a total of 15 playable characters along with several hidden ones to choose from. Number 4. The Sega Dreamcast port was arcade perfect. If Sega Saturn started a trend with fighters being close to their arcade counterparts, then Sega Dreamcast perfected it. I can't find the right words to describe how arcade perfect Marvel vs. Capcom is for the Dreamcast and really, I can't even tell the difference. This port ran butter smooth and for a CD based game, the load of times was non-existent. Everything ran as it should with no slowdowns whatsoever and all the features presented in the arcade original was included in the Dreamcast port. As a matter of fact, I will even go as far to say this version of the game is superior to the arcade since it's basically a perfect copy with added features and bonus modes to play. Number 5. Onslaught is the final boss. To those of you who may not know, when you take Professor Charles Xavier, a Sentinel, and Magneto's evil and combine all of them together, you get the supervillain menace known as Onslaught. This guy was one of the most broken OP characters in the Marvel Universe with Professor X telepathy and Magneto's magnetism. In Marvel vs. Capcom, this guy will bully you into submission. To this day, I still have PTSD with him saying, The dream is dead. In this game, Onslaught has two forms you have to face. He has a smaller form around the size of a Sentinel and a larger form that's around the size of Apocalypse. Both forms are capable of insane damage and can melt your HP in a matter of seconds just like Cyber Akuma. Number 6. There's a total of 7 secret characters. 
In his last entry, we always discuss secret characters in the game and Marvel vs. Capcom is no exception. These characters consist of Ro, Lilith, Shadow Lady, Onslaught, Red Venom, Gold War Machine, and Orange Hulk. Onslaught is a boss character, so you can't pair him up with a partner. Now, most of these characters are what I call Echo characters, which means they play similar to their regular counterparts, but not exactly. In the Dreamcast version, there's an Onslaught mode which allows you to play as him against CPU opponents. In order to play with these characters, you must input a special code on the character select screen. To see these code commands, please refer to the pinned comments to see how to unlock each character. Well everyone, that's it for this video. If you have anything you'd like to add or if you have a question, feel free to leave a comment. With that being said, I'm Dad Mishima. See you next video.